why we sleep. What they do, what they have sort of worked out, there's a few different things. One is it's really important for us. Um, it's really important for our insulin function, so our glucose levels, so in terms of being important for people. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Kidney Coach YouTube channel. I am naturopath and co-founder of the Kidney Disease Solution and chiogenesis Fiona Chin, and I'm joined today by the amazing Emily Carhill. Emily is a registered nurse. Emily, thank you for joining me again today. Um, and I think today we want to talk about the importance of sleep. So let's just dive in and discuss why sleep is so important. So um, take it from the top. I don't need to say what is sleep. I think everybody knows what it is, but why is sleep so important for everybody, especially if you've got a chronic disease like kidney disease? Yes. So I guess to start with, maybe I'll talk about why we sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the funny thing is that they haven't 100% worked that out. Um, yeah. But they're, yeah. um, obviously we know it's important because if you don't sleep, you know, there are some people who have conditions where they can't sleep and, and they end up dying. So we know that it's very important. Um, but what they do, what they have sort of worked out, there's a few different things. One is it's really important for us um, to be able to conserve our energy. So to have that period of rest overnight um, where we're able to conserve energy and it helps in terms of uh, restoring our cells. So um, it's, you know, a really kind of a period of time where our cells are able to repair um, and grow mm -hmm. and so a lot of that repair work happens while we sleep which is obviously you know thinking about repairing the kidneys that's um, clearly one of the benefits it's really important for our brain function so it allows our neurons so our nerve cells in our brain to reorganize um, and we know that there's a big link between um, sleep problems and cognitive disturbances it's really important for our emotional health. So it helps us regulate emotions. Um, it actually, while we sleep, different areas of our brains are switched on um, that are supporting that. Helps in terms of maintaining weight. So- mm -hmm. uh, one that people don't know about. Yeah, so um, sleep actually affects our weight by um, certain hormones that are produced in the body. So we've got hormones that increase our appetite and hormones that help to improve that uh, um, that feeling of, of being full after eating and being um, satiated and um, and not no longer being hungry. While we're asleep, the, in, the hormone ghrelin that increases appetite reduces and leptin increases. So um, if we have sleep disturbances, if we're not getting enough sleep during the night, if we're not sleeping during the right time of night then this can also create this can create an imbalance between those hormones and it can affect people's hunger and fullness signals um, makes people uh, they've shown that people who sleep less hours during the night are more likely to eat more calories and it's not just because they're awake for a longer period um, but it actually changes um, the way their body responds to food uh, it's really important for our insulin function, so our glucose levels, so in terms of being important for people uh, with diabetes or who are pre-diabetic. Uh, it helps boost our immune system. Um, it protects our heart. So uh, they've shown that people who sleep less are at a greater risk of things like heart attacks and strokes. So, uh, yeah, so that was a little bit about why we sleep as well as some of the benefits. Um, yeah, and I just, I'll add to well. that. Yeah, I'll add to that, that one of the things that happens in sleep is you move your short-term memories into long-term memories. So you need these spindle cells and you need to get these delta brain waves and things that happen in sleep. And yeah, you are moving short-term to, to long-term memory storage. And that only happens in sleep. So um, that part of that cognitive stuff that you're talking about, I remember that really well from when we did a sleep podcast ages ago for the um, clinic, but that was yeah something that stood out that I, that I didn't know until I really researched it. And I found that fascinating of, especially with cognitive decline and things like Alzheimer's as we get older, why sleep is so important. So, um, so when we're talking about sleep and sleep quality, I mean, sleep looks so different for different people and you mentioned in sleeping in the right times what did you mean by sleeping at the right times yeah so our body works on a circadian rhythm so it works on a 24-hour clock um, and it's largely regulated by light and dark so 
um, if we are going to bed too late, um, even if we're getting the same, you know, even if we're getting what would uh, appear to be uh, appropriate or a normal number of hours of sleep, the, the cycles that our body goes through in terms of things like repair, in terms of things like hormone production, um, in terms of as well how deep our sleep is, differs mm -hmm. depending on what time of, of night you're actually sleeping. So the later uh, you're going to bed and sort of um, sleeping into, into the later part of the day you actually end up having less deep sleep and less restorative sleep and you actually sleep more in a light sleep so even though you might be getting the same um, amount of hours it's not having the same uh, benefits in your body so we really should be sleeping when it's dark and up yeah. when it's awake which you know we know that shift workers are much more prone to metabolic diseases and things like that probably because of this so what is the ideal like how many hours is ideal and what's the ideal time to get into bed and wake up then? Yeah, so most of the research shows it depends on age. So how many hours of sleep we need. Um, we need more sleep when we're younger. Um, and then as we become adults, it's about seven, seven to eight hours is what they say is a good amount of sleep. And when we look at what some of the negative effects of sleep deprivation, so not getting enough sleep, um, it's really interesting that the same negative effects actually occur if you get, it's usually sort of six hours and less sleep is where kind of that tipping point that happen if you actually get too much sleep. So yeah. there's kind of a, I guess, a sweet spot, which is for most people somewhere between seven to eight, maybe nine hours. Getting less than that's going to be problematic, but getting more than that's also going to be problematic. If you like this information, make sure you hit like and hit subscribe. It means you'll get notified any time that we put up more information. If you want uh, to find out more about the Kidney Disease Solution, head over to www.kidneycoach.com. And on there, you'll find uh, the article on sleep that Emily wrote. You'll find uh, we post a free article every week of there's, I don't know how many articles, there must be two, 300 articles on there by now of just stuff that Emily and I are posting every week. Head over to our Facebook page, www.facebook.com forward slash kidney coach. We're posting every day full of great free information on there. And then we've also got our supplement range in our program. Um, and if you're part of our kidney disease solution family, you've got Emily and Rachel, our other fully, quad, uh, fully qualified naturopath that are on hand to answer any and all questions that you have about medications in the program. So Emily, thank you again. If you want some more one-on-one, -on -one, um, if you are doing the program and you want some one more one-on-one -on -one specific support, then you can also email us at support at kygenesis or support at kidneycoach.com and Emily will be able to book you in and do an appointment with you. Ems, thanks again, and um, thank you for being part of our Kitty Coach uh, family. We uh, really appreciate you guys, and we will see you next time.